Welcome back. This is lesson three of machine learning Zoom Camp session four. And in this lesson, we will talk about confusion table. So confusion table is a way of looking at different errors and correct decisions that uh, our binary classification model makes. And in the, previous, uh, in the previous lesson, we looked at accuracy. So we looked at different uh, um, at evaluating accuracy uh, across different thresholds uh, for making a decision. And then we also noticed that uh, if we have a dummy model, it's um, also quite good uh, compared to the model we have. And the reason for that is because we have class imbalance in our data set. And if we just uh, predict that everyone is non churning, our model will be quite good. So we need uh, to have a different way of evaluating the quality of our model that uh, is not affected by the class imbalance. And for that, we'll start with confusion table. So, so let's say we have a customer. So we have a customer xi, uh, and then we apply our function g to this customer, and we get a decision. So what we can decide is uh, we can predict churn. And we do this if our prediction is above a uh, threshold, or we predict uh, not churn if our prediction is below the threshold. Right, so this is the decisions we make. And uh, remember that in case we decide that uh, a person is going to churn, we want to send them promotional email. And if person, we think a person is not going to churn, we're not going to send them anything. There are two scenarios that can happen after that. So, or actually four. So let's say our model outputs some score and the score is less than 0, 0 0.5 or some other threshold. So our prediction is not churn. What can happen is that uh, customer indeed didn't churn. Or what can happen is we predict not churn, but customer did actually churn. So in this case, we would be making an error. So let me move the error a little bit. Right? And then, so this is in case uh, when we predict not churn, and the same can happen with churn. So we can again have uh, two possible scenarios here. So we predict churn and we make a correct decision, customer actually churn. Or we make an error and we think that the customer is going to churn, but they do not churn. In case when we predict that customer is churning, we think that uh, this instance, this customer is a positive class. So we predict that uh, it's positive. So there is actually churn. And in case of no, no churn, we predict that this is an instance of a negative class. In these two cases, so customer, they were going to churn and they churned. So this is actually correct. And then when we predict no churn and the customer didn't churn, this is correct. And then the two other scenarios, these are incorrect decisions. So we predict that customer churned, but they didn't. And likewise, we predict that customer didn't churn, uh, but they did churn. So the green ones, uh, they are correct decisions and the red ones are incorrect. And uh, each of these four outcomes, they have their own name. So when we predict positive and customer end up churning, this is called uh, true positive. So we think that this observation belongs to the positive class and it turned out correct. So that's why we have true positive. So it is positive, we think it's positive, and this is correct. Then the other correct prediction is uh, true negative. So we think that this customer, this observation belongs to the negative class, and this is correct. So it's called true negative. The other two instances, uh, the two other cases, we make incorrect decisions. So um, they are both, uh, they start with false. So in the first case, so in case when we predict that this instance observation belongs to the positive class, but it's not correct, we think the customer is churning, but they do not churn. So this is false positive. So we think this is positive, but this is false. So, and we think that this customer is churning, we send them an email, but they are not churning. And then they just use this discount, uh, even though they weren't going to churn. And then another, the last one is also false but this is false, uh, false negative. So here we think that this person is okay. They are safe. They are not going to churn. They're not going to leave us, 
but they decide to leave us anyways. So we again made an incorrect decision and we falsely predicted that this customer is a non churning one. So these are the four different outcomes. And uh, the way I like to think about uh, them visually is, uh, let's say we have uh, like all our customers from the validation data set. And we can split this validation data set into two different ways. So first, uh, when we split, we can use our target variable. So we can use uh, our Y validation, right? And we can split all the customers. So this is our all customers. So we have all customers. And first we can use our Y validation to split these customers. So we can split them into two parts. So first uh, part is uh, people who churn. So this is churn. So this uh, Y equals to one. And the second uh, group of customers, those who uh, didn't churn. Right, so this is one way of uh, splitting all our customers into two groups. And the other way would be using our uh, function G, like our model, depending on the threshold. So we can uh, conclude uh, either we predict that this customer is going to churn so let's do it like this. So first one is uh, we predict churn. So this is actually predicted. Predict churn and predict no churn. So again, so this is uh, when the score is above the threshold and then this is, and for this is when it's below the threshold. So right, we can take all the customers and we can split all the customers into two groups. Those who we think are going to churn and those who we think are not going to churn. And then actually we can combine these two splits into one. So now when we combine, so we have uh, our target variable, right? So we have our actual value. So we know people who have churned, who, who didn't. And then we have uh, also our customers who we predicted as churning. So this group is uh, people who we predicted as churning, correctly predicted as churning. So this one is we correctly predicted uh, no churn. And then uh, last two groups here, we think that uh, they are not going to churn. So we predicted no churn, but they did churn. The last one is we predict churn, but they do not churn. Two out of these four groups are correct. And two are not correct. And uh, if we go back to this uh, true negative, true positive, false negative, false positive, so you can see that uh, this one is true positive, this one is true negative, so these are the correct predictions. So this one is uh, false positive, and this one is false negative. We will now implement this in Python, but before we do this, let's take a closer look at this thing here. So, okay, so if we have that and here, so for true positives, so true positives are when we predict that our customer is churning and they are indeed churning. So both our prediction is above the threshold and the label, the correct label is true. Then for this one, for true negative, we predict, uh, so our prediction is that the customer is not churning and the correct label is zero. So this is, uh, the label is negative. For false negative, we predict that this customer is not going to churn, but they actually are churning. So they are going to churn. So here in this case, what we have is the prediction is negative, but uh, the actual label is uh, positive. And then finally, the last one is uh, our prediction is positive. So this is false positive. We predict that this customer is going to churn, but the actual label is negative. So they are not going to churn. So with this, we can now implement this in NumPy. So let's do that. So first, what we'll do is first take a look at people who are actually churning. So actual positive, so people who do churn. And this is uh, 
cases when uh, I validation equals to one, right? And then actual negative people who are not going to churn. What we have here is actual positive uh, is array with true false. It's a binary array. So it says true when a customer is going to churn and actual negative is true when people are actually not going to churn, right? So we have that. And if we talk about this diagram here that we created, so we are now talking about this part here. So this split into churning and non-churning. So now we need to uh, to do the other one, to implement the other one. So when we predict churn and predict non-churn, predict uh, positive is um, our prediction is above, uh, so let's say threshold will be 0 0.5. And then we predict positive when um, it's above threshold and we predict negative, predict negative when it's below the threshold. Again, we have a binary array, which um, contains only true and false values. So true for this one, for predict positive true, when we predict that this customer is going to churn. And likewise, in predict negative, we have true only when customers are not going to churn. So we have the second uh, split here. So what we need to do now is to combine them into one. So we can use this to see how we can do this. So for example, let's start with true positive. So for true positive, this is... Um, predicted positive and actual positive. So for that, we can use uh, this binary operations from NumPy. So predict positive and actual positive, right? And it will return an array that is true only if both are true. So we can quickly check this predict positive. Let's say we can uh, take a look at the first five and we can take a look at actual positive also first five. Yeah, maybe this is not a good example because so here the result will be true because both of them, so both of them are true. So the result will be true. So here, let's say if this one was false, if this one was true, for this, the output would be false because both has to be true. So if one is uh, true and other, uh, the other is false, then it's false. So both has to be true. And only in this case, the output is true. So let's say if here we had true, this one would also be false. But if uh, this one and this one are both true, then the output would be true, right? So we'll look at cases when both predicted positive and actual positive are true. And this is what this end operator is doing. So it computes the element-wise uh, logical end. Now what we can do is we can just quickly look at how many of them are there. So we see that there are 210. What we can do now is just write, okay, there are 210 of them. So this is uh, two true positive. So we know that there are 210 true positives. And then we can do the same with, uh, let's say, true negative. So true negative are actual negative and predicted negative, right? So and then we have uh, 922. 922 of them are true negatives. So these are correct ones. And we have incorrect, we have false, false positives and false negative. False positive is when we predict positive, but it turns out actually it's not positive, right? So predict positive and actual negative. So this is false positive. So again, we're interested in sum. And false negative uh, would be, I just copy it. So false negative would be the opposite. So we predict negative, but it actually turns positive. Right. Then let's also take a note at what are the values. So false positive is 101, 101, and false negative is 176, 176. So we have these values. And uh, usually this is not how we write down these values. So this, uh, these circles and ovals was more like just for um, I find it easier to explain what uh, the confusion table is. And now we will actually see the confusion table. So confusion table is a way to put all these values that we just saw into all these types of errors and correct decisions into a single table. So in this table, there are four cells. Um, so this is a two by two table. In rows of this table, we have the predictions. First case is when uh, we have a positive prediction. We predict that the person is going to churn, and we have negative prediction. Our prediction is that person is not going to churn. This is what we have in the columns in, of this matrix. And the same we have, but for the actual values. So these are the rows. 
So we have positive examples and we have negative examples. So here it means that y is equal to one and negative y is equal to zero. And if we talk about our project, so this one is churn, no churn. And here it's uh, actual churn and uh, actual no churn. And now we can put the same values here in this uh, in this table, in this confusion matrix as we have here. So this one would be true positive. We predict positive and it's actually positive. So we predict churn and user did churn. And this is uh, true negative. So we predicted not churn and user didn't churn. And then when predict that a customer is going to churn, but they do not, this is false positive. And the final one is false negative. We predict not churn, but the person is going to churn. So we have that. And uh, so the correct things are here. So true positive, true negative, and false positive and false negative are not correct. And uh, yes, we have the values here. So we have uh, uh, 922 for true negative, then we have 210 for false, uh, for true positive, then for false positive is uh, 101, and false negative is 176. So now we can create the same uh, matrix, the same table, but uh, with NumPy. So what we need for that is to just arrange them in the same way, right? So confusion matrix. Um, so let's create an NumPy array. So, and we have um, two rows here. So first is we have, uh, was it false? So true negative and false positive, true negative, false positive. And then the second row is false negative, true positive, false negative, true positive. But, uh, let's just uh, print it. And this is our confusion matrix. So we see that in our case, we have a lot uh, more false negatives than for false positives. So, and remember false, uh, false positives, people who get the email, even though they are not going to churn. So we actually lose some money by giving them the discount. So they are not going to churn, but we give them discount and they use this discount because why not? So we are losing money here. And for false negative, uh, we don't send them email. All right, so, and they, they leave. So we again have, uh, we are losing profit here because we do not manage to retain these customers and they leave and they stop paying us altogether. Right, so this is the situation we uh, want to await. So, and we see that we actually have two different types of errors and, and this one seems more difficult to catch. So we have a lot more uh, false negatives than for false positives. So we have now, we have this situation now, uh, we know what kind of errors the model makes. We can also normalize this. So by normalizing, I mean, um, so here we have absolute numbers. Uh, I think I have a type of here, confusion matrix. But yeah, so what I was saying is uh, instead of absolute numbers, we can have relative numbers. So we can have percents to execute that. And so we see that here, let me just round it a little bit. Yeah, so we see that we have 65% uh, here, we have 50% here. Right, so these are our correct predictions. And then we have 7% uh, and 12%. 7%, let's put it uh, eight, for example, because I think that because of the rounding doesn't add to 100. So it was 12%, right? So these are incorrect. These are correct. And uh, we can also remember that our accuracy is 80%, 80%. And this is, uh, so we have two types of correct decision. First is true uh, negative, which is 65%. And then we have 15% of true positive. So this is how we can see that this is our accuracy. So we just need to sum these two to get our accuracy. So this is uh, the confusion table. So here, instead of just one number accuracy, we have three numbers and we can get better understanding of uh, what kind of uh, correct decisions our model is making and what kind of incorrect decisions our model is making. And from these values, from the values of the confusion matrix, we can derive many, many more metrics. So we'll talk about precision and recall. They are defined based on the values of the confusion table. And we will also talk about the rock curves 
that also use the values from the confusion table. So in the next lesson, we will talk about precision and recall, which are other metrics that we can use for evaluating the quality of machinery models.